Hi kids, welcome to another episode of Cooking with the Snack Master. I'm Matt Rothstein, your Snack Master. Today we're doing one of my favorites. We're going to do a little bit of Chinese food. Why do we keep doing my favorites? Because I'm the one who has to eat it when I'm done cooking here. So, today we're going to have barbecue spare ribs and we're going to have pork fried rice. I'm going to show you a couple of things about knives. I'm going to show you a couple of tips about safety. I'm going to show you some ways to not waste with your food when you're doing your trimming on your ribs. And we're going to put all that together and make a fantastic Chinese meal. Oh really, if you want to get technical, it's going to be an American meal with Chinese flavors. Because Chinese people, they don't eat like this. They don't eat the garbage we eat. That's why they're thin and that's why they're healthy. But me, I don't care about healthy. I care about taste. I'm the snack master, okay? I know I'm going to die. I'm going with a smile on my face. So let's get to it, kids. First, we have some of the vegetables that need to go into our uh, pork fried rice. The reason why we have to get these vegetables done first is because just like the last episode with gumbo, we talked about mise en place and how important that is. Well, mise en place is critical with Chinese cooking because when you're doing stir fry, it goes real, real fast, okay? So you have to have everything absolutely ready right in front of you to throw in the wok, get it going, or you're gonna burn stuff, you're gonna overcook stuff, or you're just gonna have a mess. Everything has to be right there. So let's start off with the vegetables. I have your celery, I have your carrot, I have your onion. Those are the three basics. What did we learn in the last episode? Those are French, known as mirepoix. Well, you know what? We use them in the fried rice too. Why? Because like I said, this isn't really Chinese food, this is American food. In Chinese, they have their own version of this combination, and it is known as ginger, garlic, and scallion. I have here about a tablespoon of minced garlic, I have a tablespoon of fresh minced ginger, and I have here about three scallions cut down, diced to about half inch or so. It doesn't have to be that rocket science in this. Same with the dicing here. I like it actually a little bit large dice because I want the texture, I want to taste it. So let's start off first with the carrot. Now here we have a carrot. This is round. Look what happens on the cutting board. See how it rolls around? I don't like when things roll around on cutting boards because I like my fingers right where they are. So what I'm gonna do is do one of the things that we learned in culinary school, which is square it off a carrot. So let's start there first. Take the carrot, we're gonna cut it in half like this. Then we're gonna very carefully, because it is spinning, take a piece like this, hold it very steady with our hands and a claw to keep our fingers out of the way. Hold our knife properly like this so we have control of it. And what we're gonna do is slice off and end like that. Now what happens? Now we got something that's not rolling around. See that? Fantastic. Now this is a safe carrot. Now I can make it into planks that I can dice up. One, two, and there's three. I got three pieces out of that carrot. And we're gonna take that and cut that like this. We'll take this one because it's a little bigger or wider. We're gonna cut that into two. We're gonna take this one and we're gonna cut it also like this. We'll have three pieces. These are all proper culinary techniques for how to cut things up. This is called knife skills, kids, and it's real important. You wanna take everything now that it's all squared off and nice and flat and even, and now you're gonna again do your claw. Put your hand over it. Use your hand as a guide for the size you want. Try and cut with the bottom part of the knife, and you're gonna just start to dice like this. Move your hand along. You don't have to be a samurai. You don't have to do this super fast. Once again, I want all of you at home keeping your fingers. And I don't want anybody trying to tell the snack master that, hey, I lost a fingertip and it's your fault. No, it's not. Take your time, okay? If you see me cutting this up a little bit fast, I've been doing this a long time. I'm supposed to be able to do it faster than you. You, you'll get there. And there, voila, as they say in China all the time. Not really. That's our carrot. We're going to move that off to the side. And we're going to have our next vegetable to go to, which is going to be our celery. Celery, we're going to do in a similar fashion. We're going to take this right here. We have two pieces of celery, two stalks of celery. We're going to cut that into thirds. One and two. And again, we want to make plates so that we can have something manageable. One, two three, 
four and five, I would say with that, because that was the widest part of the celery. One, two, three, four, five, right there. Once we have all this cut up in even pieces, once again, we can do our dicing. And like that. Now, we can dice these guys up. Grab them in, square them up to your knife, square them up with your hand there, and get to chop it. One, two, and so on and so forth. So we have nice, fine, diced celery. Perfect. Next, we have an onion. How do we dispatch this guy? How do we dice him up? Well, first thing you want to do is see the bulbous end here. Not the root end, but the bulbous end. We're going to cut that guy off. We don't want him. Why? He doesn't taste as good. Plus, he just gave us a flat surface. He helped us out. We want that. So, now what are we going to do now that we have something flat and safe to cook? We're going to take this knife and we're going to cut the onion right in half. Like that and like that. See that? Now you want to peel them. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of onion paper. It's not snacky. So let's peel that off. Okay? What you want to do when you peel off the paper, you're going to take off the top layer of the onion too. It's not wasteful. First of all, onions are real cheap. Second of all, that top layer, it's kind of leathery. Now it doesn't have a good texture. doesn't taste real good. Once again, not very snacky. Either. Now, we want this guy diced. So, this part is a little tricky. You want to pay attention to this, you want to be careful because your hand is not going to be clogged and safe the whole time. So, what you want to do is carefully hold your knife, slice into the onion, and just move the knife along slowly and carefully till about the end. Don't cut all the way through because this back part here is going to hold the onion together when you're dicing it, the root part. Again, you're going to leave maybe a half inch or so from the root end back. It's okay. Onions are cheap. You want one cut there, and another cut underneath that, and you have an onion that is now bagel sliced, but you're not ready to dice it yet. Because the next thing you want to do is see how the onion has these lines here. You want to follow those lines with your knife this way. You're going to come down like this, 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 and that. See that? Now watch what happens. We'll see some magic kids. Watch. Boom, boom, boom. Right through the onion like nothing. The root end goes away. Don't need it. What do we have here? Let me put all this together and take a look. This is diced onions. Wow! Magic of television. No, just a magic of knowing what to do with your knife. We're going to take that. All this stuff is going to be sautéed in a wok over very high heat because normally I tell you not to jack up your heat. Chinese food's the exception to that rule. When you stir fry, you stir fry over very high heat. Okay kids, now we're going to get into these ribs. I have here a beautiful piece of pork. These are pork spare ribs. Oh, I love pork. One of my favorite things to eat ever. Right here we have a whole rack of spare ribs. Not baby backs. I don't like baby backs. They're too small. They're too expensive. They're never in my house. We have this. This is beautiful. But we have to trim it up a little bit. We have to do a little bit of work here. So let's turn it over. What do we see here now? We have here this flat piece of meat. This is called the skirt. We want to take that skirt off. That's the first thing. How are we going to do that? Boning knife. Thin blade. You see how it has the thin blade here? It comes to a small tip at the end. It's different than our chef's knife. Our chef's knife is a lot bigger. It's a great knife. It's a utility knife. We use it for almost everything in the kitchen. We could even use it for this if we wanted, but the proper knife is this, because with this fine point, we can get up under here a little more easy. So let's get off this skirt. That's the first thing. What you want to do is just start to cut away at the skirt with your knife, and you're going to give it a little bit of working here, and it'll start to come away for you. Okay, see how I'm working this off? And we're going to use this skirt meat too. You know what this is perfect for? Because we don't like to waste this right here. We're making pork fried rice, kids, right? Where's the pork going to come from for the pork fried rice? It's going to come from the skirt, and it's going to come from the tips. 
where we're gonna get rib tips. We're gonna get rib tips, see that? There's the skirt, piece of meat right there, beautiful. Put that away. Where are we gonna get rib tips? Well, this right now is a whole rack. What I'm gonna do with it, what I always like to do with a rack of ribs, is I'm gonna cut it down into what's called St. Louis cut. That takes the top part off of the rib here and gives you a more square, more uniform rack of ribs. It's not small and tiny and puny like baby backs, but it is squared off and more manageable. We're also gonna trim off some of this end meat here, which feels just like skirt meat. We're gonna use that later again in the rice. So let's start finding the end of this rack of ribs so we can cut it down into our St. Louis cup. How do we do that? We feel for the bones. We look inside here, and if you turn it back over, maybe you can see a little bit the separation as it comes across here. You can see this fat line. I hope you can see this. Let's turn this up so you can take a look here. See this fat line here? That's gonna to start to tell you where you wanna cut across. We're gonna look in here, stick our bone and knife right through, and since it's going right through, you can tell that you've hit the right spot. If you don't hit the right spot, and the knife stops, that means you're hitting bone. If you're hitting bone, you gotta readjust where your knife is because the bone is not going to come apart. Butchery can take a little bit of work, kids, because you see, I don't have an x-ray machine here, so you gotta feel your way around. You just feel your way around carefully because again, while you're feeling your way around, don't forget you have a knife in your hand. So, you just find the top spots, and you cut your way across, like I'm doing right here. And, once you find it, you're in business. And I just found the spot. So cut it through there, and bingo. Now we have here, the rib tips. You can use this as rib tips. A lot of this is actually a boneless piece of meat, which is fantastic because again, that gives us more to work with with our pork. So I'm gonna take and trim that off and trim that down right now. I'm just gonna find my way with the point of my boning knife. And I'm gonna work my way through this meat. And I'm gonna cut away this bone on the edge here. And this just gives us that much more meat to use to make pork fried rice. I like my pork fried rice to have pork in it, otherwise it's vegetable fried rice. The snack master doesn't much believe in vegetarianism. If you're a vegetarian, that's great for you. It really is. It's not how I cook. You're probably watching the wrong show. Even the snack master's veggie burger has meat in it. It's still a burger. It still has beef. It still even has bacon. It just has a vegetable topping, which is where I get the name veggie burger. It's a little snacky play on words. So let's just work through here. Boneless meat, perfect for the rice. Here we have a tiny little bit of bone. We can't cook it, we can't trim it. There's really not much to do with this. It's too small to cook, do anything with. If you're a person who wants to make a pork stock, you can throw this in your freezer and save it until you're gonna make a pork stock, but stocks are another show. So we get rid of that. So what do we have here now? Meat, meat, more meat, all that's going to be for our pork fried rice. What do we have here? A beautiful St. Louis cut rack of ribs. What I want to do right now is put this meat aside here, because we're going to get to that in a minute, and I want to cut off the silver skin. See this white stuff back here that's all along the back of these ribs? Not snacky. It's kind of chewy, it's going to mess up the texture in your mouth. Plus, it's going to be harder for your spice rub to get into these ribs. Spice rub, you say? That's right, spice rub. These are barbecue ribs. When I think of barbecue, whether I'm thinking of Chinese food flavors or whether I'm thinking of deep south flavors, I still think barbecue, which means spice rubs and low and slow cooking. That's what we're going to do with these guys. So, let's get to this silver skin. Again, point of the knife, keeping your hands away. Just get up underneath there, and you'll mostly be able to tear this off. You get your finger under there, you can get a corner of it. Once you get a corner, you just keep working your knife back and forth, and this silver skin will come up. You will get most of it, 
You probably won't get all of it. If you don't get absolutely all of it, it's okay. If you get as much of it as you can. And you just keep working your knife back and forth, keeping your fingers out of the way. If you notice, I'm keeping my fingers at most times a good, at least a half an inch from this knife. And I'm just working through this skin. All right, we've taken off a good amount of the silver skin. This is nothing you can eat. This goes in the garbage. It has no use. All right, kids, now that we got these ribs trimmed up, we're going to talk about seasoning. How are we going to season them? We're going to season them with some flavors that go in Asian food. How do we do that? Well, what I do is I have the snacky Asian spice. This is a spice blend of my own making. How do I do that? Once you start cooking for a while, you start knowing what sort of flavors go and what sort of cuisines. That's how you learn how to cook and branch out and make all different kinds of food. So I have learned over the years what flavors go in Asian cooking. What's in my Asian seasoning? There's salt, of course, kosher salt. Black pepper, fresh cracked black, we always like that. Onion powder, garlic powder, ginger, ground ginger, it's very important. Chinese five spice powder. Now what's funny is that this is a blend itself. This isn't a blend I make, this is a blend that you can find in almost any store these days, almost any grocery store has it. I take all of those and I put them in my blender. I don't have one of those fancy little spice grinder or coffee grinder things. Those are great to have. Maybe I'll get one someday. Right now I have a blender. It works just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these ribs and we're going to rub them down with the snacky Asian seasoning. And it is a rub. So what does that mean? It means we're going to rub, kids. i put this spice all over the meat, liberally because we want the flavor and then we're gonna rub we're gonna rub this into the meat work it in work it in you notice I'm keeping this hand away from the meat right now because I'm about to touch my jars again safety kids safety and sanitation you don't want to touch raw meat and then touch your spices you're not gonna take like they do on a lot of the other cooking shows and touch this meat then go dip into your salt and start doing like this with raw meat hands it's kind of gross. If you do that, you have to throw away your salt. So this is getting all rubbed in here, nice. You can see how it's changing the color of the meat. And we're gonna do it on the other side. Why? Because I want the other side to taste like food too. So we're gonna rub this in, sprinkle it on, and start hitting it again. Salt. Five spice powder. I can smell that anise aroma coming out of there. It smells beautiful. It's a foundation of Chinese cooking. It's something they use in everything. That's why it's called Chinese five spice powder. It's a common blend. They use it. Now, ultimately, what you want to do with these, wrap these up in plastic wrap, throw them in your fridge, give them at least a good couple of hours or up to overnight. Then you're going to take them out, put them on a rack and you're going to put them in your oven in a 250 degree oven and you're going to roast them for three hours slow roasted like i said it's barbecue slow and slow is the way to go oh can i see those yeah come on michael let's have a look at them see michael loves pork michael loves ribs just like his daddy so what do you think it looks good looks good it's yeah. going to taste good too now we have our ribs here that were wrapped and they were marinated we're going to put them on a cooking rack over a cookie sheet like this and we're going to put these in a 250 degree oven for about three hours. What we're also going to do while we're roasting these ribs is take this meat that we had left over that we want for our pork and we'll throw that on the rack and we're going to cook that along with the ribs too. Why? I already got the oven on. Why not use it? Alright, now we're going to take all this meat here. This goes into the 250 degree oven right in here. Careful. Close that rack. That's going to cook for about three hours. You're going to check it after 90 minutes. You're going to see how it looks. You're going to turn the rack over. You're going to turn over the other little strips of meat and let it cook on the other side. All right, now over here, we've started getting our preparations ready for our pork fried rice. Like I said, mise en place, very important. So we have here a wok. Let's follow along. What else do we have? We have a bamboo spatula that's curved for going in the wok 
doesn't scratch the wok because I have a non-stick wok. Over here we have soy sauce, oyster flavor sauce, sesame oil. You want to be careful with the sesame oil, kids. Two things on that. First of all, it's very strong, so you just want to use a little bit. You don't want to use a lot. A couple of drops will do you. Otherwise, believe me, it's just going to taste like sesame, and you don't want that. Second tip on it is you want to keep that in the fridge because it'll go rancid on you. What else do we have here? We have the rest of our vegetables that we cut up before. We have our onions. We have our celery. We have our carrots. We have our garlic and we have our ginger. We have everything we need to go into our fried rice. Wait, do we? No, we don't. What else do we need? Oh yeah, let's take a look in the fridge. Can't have fried rice without rice, can we kids? What do we have here? We have here leftover rice. Why do we want leftover rice? Couple of reasons. First of all, leftover rice is dry. If you use rice that's fresh, it's going to be moist, it's going to be mushy, it'll absorb all the sauces, it'll just mush up in your wok, and you're not going to have the texture you want for fried rice. Another reason to use leftover rice? Because that's what it is. Pork fried rice, all fried rice, this type of dish is a dish that was invented from leftovers. So you take what you have laying around, you throw it in a wok, and you have pork fried rice. But I know what you kids are saying. Hey, where's the pork? It's in the oven, remember? It's cooking. We're gonna come back to the rice after the pork is done. We're gonna cut it up, dice it up, and then we'll have that ready for our mise en place. Everything else is ready for the mise en place, but we're not cooking yet. We're just getting prepared. I'm showing you how well in advance you wanna be prepared when you're making any sort of stir fry. Well, all right, kids, it's been three hours. The ribs have been slow roasting. It's time to take them out and do the one last step. So let's get these ribs, see what they look like, huh? Go in here. Safety first. Pot holder. Oh, look at these. Oh, this is beautiful. Uh, take that out, take a look at that. Oh, look at these ribs. Look at the beautiful pork. I wanna see them. I wanna see them. They're gorgeous. A little bit of grease. Oh, that looks really good. Michael approves. That's important. By the way, one trick here, one tip. See how these are like not completely floppy anymore? You see that? How they can how they kind of have a little bit of a texture to them? That's how you can tell they're done. Now what we want to do though is turn them over. Because we do have to do one other thing. We have to put something on. We need the sauce. What's the sauce? Here's the sauce. Hoisin sauce. This is Asian barbecue sauce. This is what's on your ribs when you go to your rib joint, when you go to your Chinese restaurant and you get the food that you like. This is the flavor. We're gonna brush this on, we're gonna throw these ribs under the broiler, let that sauce cook on there and get caramelized. Then we're gonna take these ribs out and we're gonna eat. So let's brush these ribs. Gang, and we're gonna do it liberally. We want a lot of this sauce on there. We're also gonna readjust our oven here. Turn the broiler on. We're gonna move the rack up one so that it's close to the broiler. We're gonna also add this sauce to the pork that goes in the pork fried rice because the pork that goes in the pork fried rice has this same flavor. Oh, uh, you can just smell the sauce going onto these ribs now. It's not even under the broiler yet. You can already smell it. it. Smells like a Chinese restaurant in my kitchen right now. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, I just can't wait to eat. Michael can't wait to eat either. Uh-huh. I can't wait. Now you hear that? He can't wait either. <laughs> okay, now that these ribs are sauced and looking beautiful, we're going to put them under the broiler. Let that sauce cook on for a couple minutes. We're gonna watch this now. We have to pay close attention to this so that the sauce gets cooked nicely but doesn't burn. It's a very sweet sauce, it'll burn very quickly. You're gonna let it brown, then you flip them over, sauce the other side, probably flip them over one more time, one more glaze on the top part, then they're good to go. So let's get this back under the broiler.
kids, it's fried rice time. We're back in business. The pork came out, it's cut up. I got it diced up over here. Time to get going. It's okay, everything here is ready. Like I said, everything's gonna go real, real fast. So watch how I go with this. First step, a little bit of oil in the pan. There we go. Pan is rocking hot right now. That's okay. With this kind of food, that's what you want. Give that a swirl around, make sure the oil's coating everything. First thing, onions. Once again, we love the sizzle. Have those onions go in immediately. Carrots, celery. Give that a quick move. There we go. Don't try that at home, kids. All right, we'll take that. We're gonna add in our Garlic, we're going to add in our ginger, those go in, those are in business, those aren't going to have time to get bitter because we're cooking this real, real fast, move that around, we want some sugar, we want some salt, okay, a little bit of fresh cracked black. Maybe a lot of fresh crab black. <laughs> there we go, get this moving around. All right, you can smell it. Pretty much as soon as you can smell it, everything's coming together here. And you got those basic flavors. You're in business. Next thing you want is your cold rice. Cold, dry, leftover rice, because that's what's gonna work in here. Start working the rice into the dish. Okay, now one important thing to remember about fried rice. If you've ever been to a fried rice restaurant, ever been to a Chinese restaurant, and they give you rice and it's yellow, turn around, walk away. The fried rice is not yellow. The color of fried rice is brown. How do you get the brown? You get that from the soy sauce, which we are ready to put in. Soy sauce goes in here. Gonna use a good couple tablespoons because that gives it the, most of the flavor and because it gives it the color. Put that in. Again, start working it around. Get it all to incorporate. Once you start seeing that you don't have any more rice that's white, then you know you're getting good. The rice should be brown. Just like this. This is brown rice. It smells like fried rice. It smells gorgeous. Another little Chinese flavor that's very common, a little bit of oyster flavor sauce. Not too much because it's strong. Add that in. Give that a stir. It's dark. It's going to add flavor. It's going to add a little bit more color. Once that's worked in, see how fast this is going, kids? Time to add in the pork. Next thing, eggs. Two beaten eggs. Already beaten. You want to move all the rice up to the side of the pan. You want to make a well in the middle of the pan here like I'm doing. And you're going to pour these eggs in to the middle right there and start to work them. Start working these eggs around. You want it to pretty much come together. You want it to be a scrambled egg and then you're going to work the rice back into it. You don't want to work the rice in while the egg is still liquid because then you're just going to have egg coated rice and that's not going to be the same as yummy fried rice. But you work this in and everything is working at a real high temperature. All right, this egg is already just about together because like I said, it happens real fast because we're working on high heat. All right, egg is together. Let's put the rice back in with it. Get yeah, everything working back together here. Alright, from my way of thinking, that's looking pretty fantastic. We have two finishing touches here to do. Two finishing touches. Scallions go in at the very end, because they don't take but a second. And like I said before, pinch of this. Just a tiny, tiny drop. 
of the sesame oil. Perfect. That's all we need there. Get this working in. Incorporate those scallions. Incorporate that sesame oil. Even with just that tiny drop, you can smell the sesame oil coming up in here. And that kid's pork fried rice. We're in business. Now that kid's is a rack of beautiful Chinese barbecue spare ribs. We're going to cut into those into just a second. Now what we have here is the fried rice still sitting in the wok keeping it warm. It looks fantastic. In a second we're going to plate that up. We're going to plate up the ribs. We're going to put it all together. And then kids, we get to eat. Yay! All right, guys, time to cut up these ribs. You can take a look at how they are. You're going to find your bones. Take your good knife, your chef's knife, and gut right in between. And right in between. It comes apart real easy because these are real tender ribs because they've been slow cooking. Slow cooking is the key to tender ribs. These look fantastic. Now our ribs are cut up, they look beautiful, we're ready to plate, we're ready to eat. I'm pretty simple when it comes to my plating, I have a nice white plate, every piece of food looks better on just plain white plates. People get colored plates, they get fancy plates, that's nice for them. I like the classics, I think this looks fantastic. You take this with the fried rice right piled up in the middle for a little bit of height, put a rib there. Put a rib there, put a rib there, and if you have my appetite, you're going to put another rib right there. Look at that beautiful plating. Look at that food. Oh my god, I have to have some of this. I just have to have some. Put this down here. Let me get a fork. good. The rice came out perfect, just like a Chinese restaurant. Now, oh, oh my god, that is Chinese food. Just as good as you get at any restaurant. Fantastic. It's been my pleasure to cook for you again today. I'm Matt Rothstein. I'm your snack master. Please enjoy this Chinese food. Go have yourself a snack, kids. We'll see you next time.